All right, everyone, so we've got another video here from Set the Programmer, and this one is going to be focusing on the Akatsuki, and he's going to be ranking them from weakest to strongest. Now, I know we've already seen other videos here on this channel, you know, where they rank the, uh, the Akatsuki from weakest to strongest, but we've never seen this one from set the programmer so let's go ahead and watch this video but before we do guys as always i do have to ask you that if you want to show your support for this channel uh consider leaving a like sharing this video out there comment down below with your thoughts as well as any recommendations you might have for videos you want me to react to just let me know about them in the comments and if you're new here consider subscribing and if you do remember to click on the bell icon because that will notify you whenever i post a new video because apparently youtube's notification system is still kind of broken people are not being notified whenever people that they've subscribed do upload new videos so just remember to click on the bell icon and click on all notifications to be absolutely sure that you get notified whenever i upload a new video so with all that stuff out of the way and also remember to check the description for links let's go ahead and watch this video hello everyone it's your host seth the programmer and today we're going to be doing my very own akatsuki ranking list this video sounds pretty standard and kind of stereotypical but it seems like everyone has given their inputs on this topic except for me so i thought i would finally make one myself there's a lot of contentious topics on this list to go over such as kakazu versus Bay and so on but i think i have a lot of insight to give that'll be helpful for everyone for this video i'll be taking a similar approach as i did with the saiyan ranking video as i did before where i put certain characters in classes and a range of numbers they could be at as obviously there isn't always an objective way to put one group of characters above another all the time this list will also include every akatsuki member that was introduced from part one of naruto onward of obito's akatsuki this will not include hypothetical prime characters so for instance we'll be listing pain instead of nagato itachi from part one rather than itachi in his hypothetical prime and so forth also as a rule we are not including prep time this is because obviously prep time implies it is not your normal combat ability this is more of a power scaling video than a is it possible for this character to win kind of video you guys will see as we go on the Akatsuki are a group of high Jonin plus level shinobi, all with a task entrusted in them by Obito Uchiha to acquire all of the tailed beasts. That being said, it's no exaggeration to say that pretty much every Akatsuki member is an absolute monster that can outright take down Jinchuriki, so none of them are ever really implied or considered weak for the most part in the series, but there is definitely a strength hierarchy implied by feats and the actual characters themselves that can be looked into. So starting with class D, I feel this is the one member of the Akatsuki most people believe is the weakest and for pretty obvious reasons, that being Hidan at number 10. Hidan, while even much stronger than someone like Asuma, Asuma being a character who was almost at the level of Kakashi in part 1 in the data books, and had arguably the top close range combat skills of anybody at the time, also stayed in the data book. This same person, Hidan, is self-admittedly the least accurate and slowest member in terms of attack speed among the Akatsuki. Hidan even references Kakazu as the main guy who does all of the work of their duo, with even Kakashi recognizing that Kakazu was especially powerful among them. Hidan does have a feat of fighting against Yugi Toni, but you can just argue his immortality and Kakazu could have just had done most of the work for him. So yeah, I mean, I think that that's pretty much what. <clears throat> excuse me. I think that that's pretty much what a lot of people kind of assume when it comes to that fight because. If not, then it does kind of make the uh, uh, the, the uh, Jinchuriki a lot less impressive than they were kind of made out to be. But, I mean, the Akatsuki members are specifically chosen to capture the Jinchuriki, and while Hidan himself may not be all that strong, his immortality does, does help him a lot. I mean, without it, he absolutely would be dead. I mean, remember, this guy did get his head cut off by Asuma. If he wasn't immortal, then that would have been it. <clears throat> he doesn't really have anything going for him other than being stronger than Asuma. Granted, as I said earlier, Asuma is powerful, but compared to the other characters in the show, it's usually safe to say Hidan is at the bottom in terms of scaling. In Class C, we have numbers 9 through 7, which, not in order, are Deidara, Sasori, and Conan. Conan, it's not Conan. So this and Class C will require a <laughs> bit of context to fully explain my thoughts, so don't get your panties in a bunch quite yet, but Conan, for the most part, is actually pretty featless without prep time. 
In the creation of the Akatsuki video game movie, she is shown recruiting and defeating Sasori, but this video game scene is arguably not even canon, whereas game movies such as Storm Generations are confirmed to be worked on as anime canon, the creation of the Akatsuki cutscene in Revolution isn't, and it seems to somewhat contradict things in the actual story. Revolution had some Kishimoto involvement in it, such as creating and designing the perfect Susanoo of Itachi and Shisui, but there is, once again to my knowledge, nothing confirming the actual movie part is canon the same way generations is conan's only other scaling is just being pretty confirmed to be above hedon and hedon's own words and with prep forcing obito to use izanagi however in the obito fight we have confirmation that the only reason she did remotely good in that fight to begin with is because obito initially underestimated her and forgot she was a strong akatsuki member mm -hmm. as well so you could argue every time she even did good against obito it was when he wasn't going all out so it's hard to scale yeah, her using that we're also that's something that i think a lot of people also kind of um uh, forget about the fight is that obito I mean, you can see it all throughout the fight. It's like he was not taking her seriously. And that ended up completely biting him in the ass because if he did, then he would have thought, okay, well, she might know about my abilities because she is the one who revealed, you know, to us that Obito's Kamui, uh, you know, has a five minute time limit. And yeah, so that proves that she's actually pretty intelligent and she's dangerous if you underestimate her. But. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's like when Obito is actually taking this fight seriously, she immediately starts losing and there's just no hope of her winning. Not using prep time for this video due to the nature of it, as obviously as obviously prep time would allow a lot of characters to be higher than they should be. The other problem is that her only other real combat showing is against Jiraiya, in which Jiraiya in base is able to kind of tag her with a questionable attack even against base jiraiya pain thinks she would be pretty much zero health pain also told her that naruto would mop her if she tried to fight him during the pain arc as well as this so it's not very practical to rate conan as a top tier in terms of datara and sasori this one is convoluted because obviously there's the whole argument of well datara said sasori was stronger than him and the typical counter well datara was only saying that to get kakashi off his back and to make him focus on sasori so we can capture Naruto, blah, blah, blah. We've all heard it before, so let's go over the stats instead. The stats to be considered are more so in the speed category, considering both combatants are pretty competently able to damage each other. In terms of speed, we see characters like Deidara as an Edo Tensei able to keep up with Anoki in flight. Anoki being someone who is able to face Edo Tsuchikage Mu and, of course, later Madara. He also does okay against Sasuke. However, it seems in terms of actually fighting, Sasuke was superior, and Deidara had quite a hacks and range arsenal that won't be as effective versus Sasori, which I'll explain soon. Sasori, in terms of speed, actually scales to Kaze, Kage, Gara, and Rasa, if not being blatantly superior to them. This is due to the fact that Sasori has defeated and possesses the third Kaze Kage, who is noted as the strongest Kaze Kage of all time, even when Gara is alive. Rasa, as an Edo Tensei, is also able to keep up with Gara during the war arc as well, and is mainly caught off guard while trying to defend the other Edo Kage from Gara's aerial barrage. Gara not only is fast enough to actually face Gengetsu, who is Mu's rival, and is fast enough to face Anoki as well, but also faces and defends himself from Madara, and actually directly catches and rips Deidara's arm off at the start of Shippuden. Mm -hmm. Many even theorize that Gara might have actually won that fight, or have done way more serious serious damage to Daedara if he didn't have to defend the Sand Village. So the fact that Sasori scales above Gara, who already could rip Daedara's arm off is not a good look in terms of speed. Sasori is also a very long range combatant and has taken down nations with his puppet single handedly. He has poison magnet projectiles that he can control the trajectory of mid air that we know can shred through Daedara's clay, as this was shown when Orochimaru used an Edo Tensei to summon the third Kaze Kage once again and was able to shoot Daedara's clay out of the air. Obviously, that Edo is also shown to be weaker than Sasori's puppet. Also, if he does ever hit Daedara, which the speed is implied for sure, he also one shots him upon contact due to his poison but this is also while he's just suppressed as we know his true puppet form himself is even stronger mm -hmm. and can also control puppets to 
why Daedara's C4 Jutsu also would not work on Sasori as he doesn't even breathe. So the microscopic bombs wouldn't affect him in a similar way that they didn't affect any of the trees in the area either, if you want to take that as an example. Daedara's last resort is, of course, the C0 bomb. But mm -hmm. as I said earlier, Sasori, if anything, is faster and would poison Daedara. Sasori's poison, for those that forget, also paralyzes and completely subdues the target, meaning the battle goes to Sasori out. Unless you actually have an antidote for that poison, which is, again, the only reason why I would say that Sakura and Shio even managed to survive is because Sakura did have the antidote. If she didn't have that, they'd pretty much already be dead. But yeah, um, it's interesting because I think if I remember correctly, in one of the previous videos, Sasori was actually ranked a bit higher. If I like, if I'm remembering correctly, I think he was like, um, uh, what was it? Uh, I think it was like, uh, maybe I think it was like fifth or fourth, maybe if I remember correctly. Um, hmm. I don't know, but yeah, I, I do remember in one of the videos they did go over why Sasori was actually a lot stronger than people gave him credit for. I mean, this guy, like, he's... And I, I know the Naruto series has a lot of, you know, intelligent fighters and, you know, what they call prodigies, but Sasori was one who was just... I mean, like, some of the things that he did, I mean, this guy was really young, and he was able to figure out how to turn his own body into an incredible weapon. I mean, I, I, I don't really see anyone else displaying that level of intelligence or that level of talent. And not to mention the fact that he has like all those puppets which he, he was able to use to take down an entire country, which again, I think a lot of people uh, kind of overlook, like, or they at least forget his statement that he actually took down an entire country on his own. I mean, that's absolutely insane. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and continue with the video. Worst and a tie at absolute best for Daedara. Many people like to downplay Sasori due to the Sakura battle. However, a few things to consider is that Sakura was specifically trained and even stated in the data books to be extremely agile as Tsunade taught her evasion specifically so she wouldn't die on the battlefield as a medic. On top of this, mm -hmm. Chiyo, who was fast one of the, to avoid a raw censure the, the rules of being a medical uh, uh, ninja, was helping her through a you can't die battle. because you're and the on one the team that, relies on. We then learned that Sasori is actually extremely emo and wasn't going all out genuinely trying to kill either of them with all of his effort the entire time and could have won if he actually wanted to. Due to this, I'd say Conan is a 9, Daedara an 8, and Sasori is 7. Of course, Conan is higher if you consider the game cinematic and prep time, with Daedara possibly being higher if you consider Hisame's statement of him being one of the stronger ones is valid. The only problem with this statement is that most people have not seen Sasori's true form. Even Kabuto and Orochimaru, who specifically spied on him, didn't know of it or his full power. We also never saw them comment on Sasori's death, so we have no idea what they thought of his level either plus it seemed more like spitballing from kisame when we have statements that could possibly challenge this later from more solid sources which i'll get into of course though okay. as i said before class c is up for debate and i'll let you guys choose who you think would be ordered within it in class b we have number six and five not in order kisame and kakazu i'm already getting dislikes for mentioning kakazu above class c already but people either think he's trash or absolutely broken but i'm gonna argue here that he's more in the middle kakazu could be lower and more in contention with sasori if you consider a few factors but i think there's a decent argument for him being c tier of course by putting kakazu here i also have to explain why i don't think he'd be pain uh, not level necessarily as well, unironically as many of you are aware so this will somewhat segue into a tier yeah I, I still remember that whole thing where you know that video where I, I can't remember who it was but they were trying to argue that kakuzu would uh would be pain and i think if i remember correctly yeah it was a uh um it was just a troll video like he like he was actually being serious i i could be wrong it's been a while since i've seen that video but yeah the whole kakuzu thing is just it's it's absolutely insane that some people get so worked up about him and where he um like where he ranks in terms of power because 
And I, this is mostly on Kishimoto. Because he had Kaguzu state that he fought the uh, the first Okage, he fought Hashirama, and we all know how strong Hashirama is. And so I guess maybe some people think that, well, if he's like strong enough to face against Hashirama, then he should be like the strongest at the Akatsuki. It's like, no, not necessarily, because, well, A, we don't know the specifics of that fight. I mean, we know that he got away. We know Hashirama didn't die, obviously, because, I mean... <laughs> Uh, consider what he could do there's no way Kakuzu would have been able to um, to beat him uh, but yeah again like I've always theorized that Hashirama didn't really take the fight all that seriously because A if he did he would have killed him and we know Kakuzu didn't die because he, he's still alive he went back to the uh, uh, his village which I I can't remember which one was it the the, the village hidden in the uh the grass, if I remember. Uh, oh, but it's, whatever, whatever. Yeah, it's the. Uh, uh, it, it's it's. I think it's uh, right to assume that Hashirama wasn't really taking the fight seriously, and he just he let him go, and he went back to his village. You know, and then they uh, banished him because he failed in his mission, and he got payback by stealing a bunch of people's hearts, and that's how he was able to survive all this time. But yeah, that that whole statement is what I think a lot of people kind of use as an excuse to say that Kakuzu is like, oh, he's like god tier level power because he fought a god tier level character. When I think it's pretty e like, like I said, it's easy to assume that Hashama wasn't really taking the fight seriously because again, if he did, he would have killed him. But yeah, uh, but, uh, saying all that, like, I'm not saying that Kakuzu's weak. No, Kakuzu is strong. He is. I think a lot of people kind of downplay him also, uh, as, as much as other people, like, overhype his abilities. But Kakuzu is strong. He is. I mean, he has some pretty broken abilities. He has all five changes in chakra nature, which a lot of people don't really have. And, hell, a lot of people struggle to even gain three changes in chakra nature. <laughs> But yeah, Kakuzu again. He's he is pretty strong. He is, and for me, I I don't know where I would put him on the list. I don't know if I would put him above Sasori and Deidara. With Conan, it's a little it's a little difficult because you know it's like he said in the video. We don't really know what she could really do because she's kind of feetless. Uh. I mean, he did say that, uh, you know, Naruto would destroy her if she, if she fought him. So we know she's not on that level. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, again, it's a little difficult to scale her because, you know, like, like, like I said right here, it's, she's kind of feetless without any prep time. So, yeah, uh, let's go ahead and finish the video. Hear conversations too. Or watch the Kakuzu, rest of it. In the official Naruto volumes, is stated verbatim to be one of the most deadly members of the Akatsuki. Considering Kakuzu is not particularly hacked and is more of a durable brawler type that has a lot of stamina, it is probably no exaggeration to say this is referring to power, which even Hidan and Obito both respect. Hidan and Obito being rather stingy with their opinions of others, with Hidan blatantly saying that he wants to murder Pain when he gets the chance. Being one of the most deadly definitely implies he's in the top half of the Akatsuki rather than the lower half, considering he isn't hacks, hacks being things like such as poison or genjutsu, etc. And there is decent justification for it. Kakuzu faces off against Kakashi and is more or less his level, give or take. They are able to fight each other, block each other's jutsu and attacks, and can tank each other's attacks as well. Of course, Kakuzu does seem to have the upper hand against Kakashi, but Kakashi seems to imply that with the Mangekyo, he would near death Kakuzu. This is pretty insane considering this is a much more efficient Kakashi than the one that Deidara was already running from. Kakashi shortly after then faces off against Tendo and Asura Pain and is able to take attacks from them and even forces Tendo Pain to act with caution, the same Pain to rip Jiraiya apart, with Tendo arguably being stronger than the ones that already ripped Sage Jiraiya's arm off. Defeating and even facing Kakuzu was enough for Obito to warn Pain of Naruto and his allies' abilities, showing that he is in a decent enough caliber to even fight back against Pain, which is displayed by Kakashi. However, this fear or warning is not made in reference to Sasori, Daedra, or anybody else. 
only Kakuzu. Even with the knowledge that Naruto's allies, who Obito references, have faced these people before, they are not mentioned in Obito's warnings. This, alongside the volume statement, spells it out that Kakuzu is more than likely on a higher tier than the previous, and is considered quite impressive by the actual higher-ups in the Akatsuki. I'm definitely not saying this to please the Kakuzu fans, by the way. Swear. Anyway, for Kisame, <laughs> Kisame is awkward because his power fluctuates pretty wildly depending on his competition, with him being able to become stronger the stronger his opponent is respectively however there seems to be limits to this that he admits to a few times in part one he seems to believe his limits are sani level like tsunade orochimaru and jiraiya this may be consistent if you consider tsunade a sort of pseudo rival for the fourth raikage who rivals killer b and his completed tail b state and all of the sani are supposed to be somewhat rivals in strength with kisame only taking on killer b's version 2 cloak after being heavily amped and stealing tons of chakra with even then he was almost getting one shot by the version 2 state of killer b before fusing with samehada and even admitted base b could have put a hole in him with a lightning style enhanced pencil that being said though kisame was trusted with hunting down killer b and was able to fight off his base state before absorbing any chakra pretty well the fact that obito thinks kisame could even fight killer b long enough to absorb his chakra is a great feat within itself considering sasuke who fought b recently is someone who b thinks is the strongest he's ever fought before even stronger than Joni minato respectively who b has fought many times before killer b in base is also able to fight against reanimated base sharingan itachi for a good amount of time and could even hold off some of his jutsus as well as help a fatigued kcm naruto face off against obito's reanimated jinchuriki or the new paths to pain considering clones can drain the powers of the original as we see with hashirama it might be no exaggeration to say that kcm naruto might have been nowhere near his peak during these battles but these shadow clones were still fighting off many edo tensei that everyone in the alliance was blatantly struggling with including gara anoki and so on Due to this, and even base B scaling to a stronger original KCM Naruto rather than a shadow clone even if they are all fatigued, it's very likely Kisame would simply be in a higher caliber than the rest of class C and D. Kisame is also able to force Might Guy to have used the 6th gate even with only a 30% power clone, and Might Guy has to use the 7th gate against him later when he steals some of B's chakra again. Between him and Kakuzu, I'd personally like to go Kisame, but for the Kakuzu fandom sake will run with the volume statement and say Kakuzu is stronger than base Kisame and is number five with Kisame maybe being able to overpower him with amps later. Don't smite me. In class A, we have numbers 4 through 2, which are Itachi Uchiha, Pain, and Obito Uchiha, not in order once again. Itachi, we can all agree, has varying degrees of strength, but in the lore is generally considered above Sanin tier and is on a different level than most of the cast. He is able to point a finger at and annihilate Orochimaru, faces off against Kakashi with only a 30% clone, toys around with Sasuke, stronger than the one who was already able to bully Deidara, then annihilate Orochimaru in the same fight to the point Z who thinks he's completely invincible while he's on the verge of having a heart attack and going blind obviously people will then well i mean you could say that that's mostly attributed to itachi and like having some pretty hacks abilities like being able to uh you know take down uh, what's his name orochimaru was mostly due to you know his sharingan being able to you know reflect back all of uh, uh orochimaru's you know ability especially like the ability he tried to use to immobilize him, he was able to turn it back back against him, and then against Orochimaru again, he took him out because he had the um, uh, what is it? He had uh, the Totsuka Blade, which I I'm pretty sure if Orochimaru knew ahead of time, which oh, oh yeah, I guess you'd, the prep time isn't really counted for here. So yeah, I, I guess he he would absolutely take him out, and even if he knew, he still has the Yadamir, which is able to reflect like pretty much. Well, maybe not everything, but almost all attacks. So, yeah, Itachi is, <laughs> again, I'm not really saying anything new here, but yeah, he's uh, he's pretty strong, and he has some pretty, uh, pretty dangerous weapons and, uh, like, pretty uh, hard-to-counter abilities in his arsenal.
then make contentions about the statement in part one of Jiraiya and facing off against Kisame and Itachi, where Itachi then lies to Kisame saying, oh, I, we might stalemate or we might kill each other even with your help. But obviously this is more so based on Itachi not wanting to harm the Leaf Village. We already know that Jiraiya is more of an equal to Orochimaru and Orochimaru thinks Itachi is blatantly superior to him. So obviously Itachi is not equal to Jiraiya. Kisame pretty blatantly always concedes Itachi would mop him in a fight as well and has utmost respect for him even while extremely ill he actually spars with kisame in a canon generations mini movie scene and while kisame is able to get the upper hand kisame concedes the moment itachi activates his mangekyo sharingan even while nerfed beyond belief itachi in his youth was also considered a rival for obito uchiha when he first joined the akatsuki in the novels and even with his sickness obito thought that itachi could pretty much batman him if he has ever learned his secret and could kill him if he wanted to. Many people downplay Itachi because of the Sasuke battle, but we know he wasn't even trying during this fight, yeah. so it's not really indicative of an anti feat If anything, exactly. he was just toys around with the guy stronger than Deidara and Orochimaru and one. Orochimaru even post- Yeah, that's again, that's something that a lot of people usually don't take into consideration when it comes to scaling certain characters because they don't think about like, okay, the example that you're using where okay like you try to make the argument that sasuke had surpassed itachi when he fought him and you use that fight specifically as an example but it's like you know later on because it's revealed that itachi wasn't taking the fight seriously hell even obito himself says if itachi wanted you dead you'd be dead believe me and obito knows more about what itachi can really do than sasuke does so he would know, and I, you could also say that maybe he was lying to him, he was manipulating him, but I think that we know that, like, Itachi at that point was strong enough to be able to kill Sasuke if he wanted to, because later on when he does get reanimated, and he doesn't have, you know, the illness, he's not going blind, he's able to keep up pace with the KCM1 Naruto. I mean, if, that, if that's what... If that's the level of strength that Itachi was at the point where he was fighting Sasuke, where if at that point he wasn't sick and he wasn't going blind, then yeah, like Sasuke would, would be dead if Itachi went in with killing intent. And again, like that's, that's something that usually happens when it comes to these versus battles where people don't really take context into, into consideration when it comes to scaling certain characters up against, you know, other characters fight with Hiruzen thinks he can fight off Sasori after researching a lot into him and even though he doesn't know of his true puppet form he knows of his third Kazekage puppet and even then and with his two Hokage summons he had before he still never considered fighting Itachi even after fighting Hiruzen he blatantly admits Itachi was always stronger than him and wants to take Sasuke to reach his level with his Amaterasu that could easily one shot any Jinchuriki the Totsuka Blade and Yadamir Itachi really is pretty much invincible in the first half of Shippuden. Now the reason I put pain in A tier is for many lore reasons which I'll go over. In terms of his raw feats he is able to take down a Kakashi who if anything is more powerful and trying even harder than he did against Kakazu. Even after spamming his Mangekyo he thought he would near death Kakazu with. He is absolutely flatlined and can't even put a scratch on Tendo pain even with Choji and Choza both helping him out. Pain also is able to tag and damage full power Sharingan Kakashi faster than literally anybody in the entire series and stabs him in pretty much 10 seconds of their fight. Imagine if Pain had Sasori's poison, he would have just... Oh, okay, he, he talked about stabbing him, and, but he showed that clip, which I thought, wait, he didn't stab him, like Kakashi blew it away, or he sent it to the Kamui dimension, but then I remember, oh yeah, at the beginning of the fight, he used he used uh, Bansho Tani to pull him, and then the Ashura path stabbed him with his sword. So, okay, yeah, I, I think he was referencing that, I, but he, he used that clip, which I... Got me a little bit confused because like, wait, that's not what happened, but all right, moving on. Just killed Kakashi like he was a background fodder character. Or how Sasori treated Konkuro at the start of Shippuden is a good example as well. Tendo then becomes extremely fatigued after he spurs out and uses all of his energy to annihilate the Leaf Village with a Shinra Tensei, and then has to face Sage Naruto and, and all of Mount Miyaboku. Naruto at this moment is an absolute monster, even in base, Kakashi thinks that Naruto is already strong enough to fight alongside him, and even after seeing Kakazu fight, he thought he could destroy him. He didn't just see Kakazu and go, wow, that got... 
no, no. He didn't just see Kakuzu and go, wow, that guy could blitz. Oh, did someone call him while he was recording? Okay. Yeah, that, that, that does happen, which is, it's kind of the reasons why whenever I, uh, like whenever I record a video, I always make sure to check my phone because like, okay, like, no, let me, let me put it in silent because I, I don't want my phone ringing while I'm, while I'm recording the video. I mean, I could always edit it out later on, but yeah, that's, that's something that I do. Um, I've actually got my, my phone right here and check this. Okay. Okay. So yeah, it is, it is on silent. So I don't want, I don't want it to, uh, disrupt the other uh, recording me by over 72 times my current speed he looked at kakuzu and thought it was doable now naruto is stronger than ever before with all of mount miyaboku helping him kane just literally fought the entire leaf village by himself then wasted all of his power blowing it up then naruto learns all of pain's secrets like he has a video game guide of a boss ready on hand and guess what he still loses. He still Pain loses, is also yeah. entrusted with facing down the Leaf Village which, after Kakuzu is annihilated. Which I actually did talk about before, because a lot of people tend to forget that Naruto technically lost that fight, and it actually makes Pain out to be more impressive, because, like he said, he used up most of his chakras to destroy the village. He just got done fighting the entire village, and a lot of their more skilled shinobi granted some of them were away from the village like guy for example was away um but yeah he still fought them and then naruto shows up in perfect sage mode and he knows all of pain's abilities he knows his secrets he knows how to counteract them naruto still loses which again just makes pain to be way way more impressive as an antagonist when, when you really think about it and then Kotsky watched it happen with the actual Shonen Jump release of Pain's introduction then literally immediately saying Pain is the strongest man in the Akatsuki and he is hunting for Naruto. With his Chubaku Tensei, he's able to hold down eight tails of the nine tails if he put all of his... Sorry, I, I just want to focus on something real quick. So you guys have heard me say before in the, uh, you know, in, in previous videos that... I would always prefer people go read the manga as opposed to watching the anime. And there are reasons for that. Well, one of them I've talked about before is because they, the anime sometimes censors things that are in the manga. You know, because the manga is usually a lot more brutal than the actual anime. Not always, but for the most part, that's the case. And another reason is because sometimes the anime will add things or they'll change things that completely confuses people this this is this is a prime example so you remember this moment in the anime when it's after the uh, human path i think uh, rips out uh, uh, shizune's soul excuse me forgot her name for a second and then he also learns everything she knows and that's how pain knows that naruto's in mount miyaboku and he's not in the leaf village and then he says that okay i'm gonna go get him uh and then he basically starts floating away yeah, here's the thing. Um, that was not in the manga. If you if you never read the Naruto manga, that was not there. And the reason why this is annoying and why they do this, you know, when when uh, when the anime changes things and they don't stick to what's in the manga, it causes people to be a bit confused. So, for example, people saw this and they probably thought that, oh well, people who have the Rinnegan probably have the ability to, you know kind of fly or float well that's actually not the case the only people who know how to fly are otsutsuki clan members or people who gain access to six pass senjutsu those are the only people who are able to fly like naruto when he got six pass senjutsu from uh from what's his name uh hagoromo he was able to fly and uh, yeah, Madara and Obito, when they became the Ten Tails Jinchuriki, they were able to fly. And all the Otsutsuki clan members are also capable of flying. We know this. If you are just a regular human and you manage to awaken the Rinnegan, you do not have the ability to fly. But see, it's, it's things like this that causes people to be confused. Because in the manga, this never happened. In the manga, he actually jumps. He jumps from the, the top of the Hokage building all the way up into where he is, and presumably he's just using, like, he's continuously using uh, Almighty Push, because you know that when he uses it, uh, a barrier forms around him, and then he pushes it away. 
So presumably that's what he's using to keep himself up there, but we know that he can't keep him there, keep himself there permanently, then he'll just fall back down. That's what happened in the manga. People with the Rinnegan, no matter how good you are with it, you can't fly. Only people who have six best in Jutsu, whether by becoming a Jinchuriki for a Tentails or by just being given six best in Jutsu by someone who already has him, like what happened with Hagoromo and Naruto. So yeah, just wanted to say right. Uh, just want to say all that be uh, because, like again, I I just don't want people to be confused because when they're confused, then they possibly go around spreading misinformation, which is something that I'm just personally not a fan of. So let's go ahead and go back to where. Tails of the Nine Tails, if he put all of his force into it, which means it would have required the full Nine Tails to bust out of his full power sealing jutsu. A huge leap in strength from characters like Orochimaru and the Sani and getting mopped by simply four tails of it. Even after being defeated, Zetsu thinks that Pain ever being defeated is completely inconceivable and that he has no idea how Obito ever thought it was even possible. Even though Zetsu literally watches and records all battles, he didn't think it was ever possible even after witnessing the rest of the Akatsuki get pretty much defeated. Many argue that Pain is simply not at full power during the Konoha invasion, which is true. He's actually degrading ever since he fights Jiraiya in the Rain Village, and isn't even close enough to Nagato to use his full power on top of being fatigued, which could explain this loss. As well as nobody expecting Naruto to become so strong, as Obito and Zetsu both imply and tell Sasuke. It's very clear that Pain is in A tier, and is intended to be a next level opponent in the Akatsuki by Kishi Moto himself alongside Itachi. Finally, we have Obito Uchiha. Obito, even with just his orange mask, is able to react to the Raikage and is able to blitz through Anoki's particle style to the So if Obito's at number two, I think we know who's at number one. Point he can't even see him move. Obito also thinks he would mock Again, it was kind of obvious. MS Sasuke and is generally unfazed when Kabuto pulls out a swarm of Edo Tensei Akatsuki members and only decides to work with him when he sees the real Madara be pulled out. Obito has Genjutsu that contain even perfect Jinchuriki and the complete nine tails with almost no effort and can simultaneously fight the fourth Hokage and scare him at the same time. To put this in perspective, Obito pretty much took on the third and fourth Hokage and the entire Leaf Village pretty much at the same time and arguably almost stalemated them when he was a lot younger and arguably weaker. This is of course no prep time Obito, but even without the Ninetales, Minato warns that Naruto will have to become a ton stronger to ever fight him, Minato literally watching the battle with Pain unfold right before even saying this, and says he thinks you'd have to have a complete control of the Ninetales to ever mm -hmm. confidently fight him. He would have to He's become a perfect Jinchuriki of the Ninetales with Kurama. Blade with one arm, whereas it took <laughs> Killer B2, and never even uses his Mengekyo Sharingan for almost any feats in the series as stated in the databook, or never shows them in combat. He is without a doubt a higher caliber than the rest of the Akatsuki and B and lower, and isn't pressed by anybody in the series until Madara appears. Now, how does the ranking in A tier go? That depends. On one hand, you could argue Pain is stated to be the strongest, and Zetsu thinks it's impossible he'd ever lose, but on the other, you could know how Minato thinks Obito would require even more strength to face, and Itachi could potentially Batman Obito at his peak. So, maybe you can make an argument that Pain is the strongest in the Akatsuki in terms of raw power, examples being Chibaku Tensei and the Renegon's raw power increase, with Obito and Itachi being faster, being a possibility, but I'll let you guys decide, how do you think the ranking in A tier goes? I know- Okay, so, for me personally, I, I do agree with what he said, that Pain would be the strongest in terms of just raw power, being- which makes sense since, you know, they get the power from Nagato, who is a member of the Uzumaki clan, and we know that, uh, you know, Uzumaki clan members have more chakra than the average shinobi, and they have stronger life forces being, you know, related to the Senju. And, um, but then again, you remember what Minato said, where he saw the whole fight between Naruto and Minato, uh, excuse me, Pain, but he said that to fight Obito, you would need to get a lot stronger. You'd need to actually gain control over the, the Ninetales, even after he saw what the Ninetales was doing when he took over Naruto. With Itachi, it's interesting because, again, like we said, Itachi, when he was reanimated, presumably being at the same level he was when he was still alive, except this time he doesn't have the disadvantages of being sick and going blind, 
he was able to keep up with KCM1 Naruto. Now, does that mean that Obito wouldn't have been able to do that? No, I, I think he would, because I think, again, a lot of people kind of underestimate Obito. Because remember, half of his body is made up of Hashirama uh, Senju's DNA. So he obviously would get a pretty big power boost because of it. Um, and not to mention, he also has Kamui. So, I don't know. Again, like, all of these characters are pretty close. But for me, I think that I would put Obito first, just... Purely based on Minato's statement, even though he did see what uh, what Kane was capable of during his fight with Naruto, although you could say that because Kane wasn't really at full strength because of you know his fight with the Leaf Village and then using uh, Shinra Tensei to destroy the uh, village, uh, so you could say Minato probably doesn't have a, a, a good grasp of how strong Nagato actually is or Pain specifically. Um, but granted, Minato is pretty smart, and he has always shown good judgment when it comes to guessing how dangerous an opponent is, so you could possibly say that maybe he did figure that part out, about how, okay, this guy, like, he's, um, he's, he's kind of, like, not at 100%, and if that's the case, then him being at 100%, he'd be, uh, like, he could get a good guess of how strong this guy is at full power, and if he knew that, but he still looks at Obito and says, no, you'll need to be a lot stronger to take this guy out, then that would put Obito above um, above pain. But would it put him above Itachi? I don't know. Uh, again, it's a little bit difficult. So just for now, I would say goes Obito. And, and then with Itachi and Nagato, it kind of switches. Um, I would say Obito... Itachi and then Pain for now. I'll say for now. It might change. Again, Itachi and uh, Pain's placements keep switching between the... Uh, keep switching, like, for me at least, all, all, the, uh, all the time. It's, uh, it's a little difficult for me to say. Yeah, but for now, I'll just say it goes Obito, Itachi, and then Pain. For me personally. Some people think Obito is a completely higher tier, like he'd be like S tier, but unfortunately it's still there's still too many factors that kind of make it too debatable for me to say that confidently. I want to keep the tiers as these are debatable subjects rather than this is actually how it should go. Now in S tier, we have Zetsu, number one. Now Zetsu is weird, so hear me out, but he can either be utter garbage or really? pretty peak. So he can either be number one or possibly in C tier. And the reason Zetsu is weird is because his power can depend on who he's attached to. So for oh, instance, is he not? He's oh, okay. Oak. So I, I guess he's, uh, he's not including Madara in this list. Okay, well, if that... That's understood, because I thought, wait, there's no way he's putting Zetsu above Madara, is he? Okay, so I guess he's not including Madara in this list. Never mind. Obito, he can fight off EMS Sasuke. When Guru Zetsu is attached to Yamato, he can fight off the entire Shinobi Alliance at the same time. So it makes you wonder just how truly strong Zetsu would be, or could be, when attached to certain characters. Oh, and he also stabbed Ten Tails Madara, which is a better feat than any Akatsuki member, GG, but... Now, anyway, that one is kind of a joke, but it really depends on those factors, as I said. So maybe you guys can rank Zetsu yourselves, but that's my list. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, maybe consider leaving a like and subscribing. And other than that, till next time. Hey, well, uh, that's the... Uh, okay, yeah, that's the video. So, yeah, I mean... Look, these videos are always interesting because, you know, you get to debate with people about where certain characters would rank. Uh, again, I think for me, the most difficult to decide was the ones who were, you know, top three, Obito, Pain, and then Itachi. I already told you what um, what my placement would be, but I want to know where you guys would rank these characters. Let me know all that in the comment section down below, and while you're here, guys, please consider leaving a like, sharing this video out there, and if you're new, hit the subscribe button, and make sure to click on the bell icon to be notified whenever I post a new video, because YouTube's notification system is still broken. And they haven't fixed it for some weird reason. And also, while in the comment section, other than your thoughts, let me know about any videos you would like me to react to. Just tell me about them in the comment section down below, and I will uh, get to them uh, when I can. But anyway, that's all for this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll join me for the next one. Bye for now.